Welcome back to another edition of We Are RSC's Recruiting Roundup with Scott Schrader. I'm Dylan Brazier, and we're back on Monday with some more important recruiting news. Thanks so much to Bird Dogs for sponsoring this video and sending me some of their signature Bird Dogs shorts. They're designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving me a truly sculpted look. Other shorts are made of restricting stiff cotton, but Bird Dogs fixes this using cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches to get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Order your bird dogs today and they'll give you this free white tech hat with your order. And yeah, you got to go to www.birddogs.com slash USC or use promo code USC at checkout. That's www.birddogs.com slash USC or promo code USC at checkout for the free white tech hat with your order. They also got these fantastic polo shirts. They're very breathable, look very nice at formal events, but also very sporty and athletic. So thank you very much, bird dogs. Uh, Scott, you've been staying on the East Coast. What have you seen? Still on the East Coast. Uh, decided not to, to fly back to Los Angeles for the Arizona game. Although, in retrospect, <laughs> I actually would have loved to have been there for the for the triple overtime game. Oh, yeah. Especially with knowing a few of the guys on the University of Arizona team, like like T-Mac and Noah Fafita. You know, I know it was, it was painful for USC fans to watch what those guys did offensively, but I would have enjoyed watching those guys play, along with, with USC winning that game and – uh, so, yeah, I, I, I'm on the East Coast of D.C. I went and saw Jalen Harvey play again. I don't think I've ever gone and seen an out-of-state prospect play more than two times, Ooh. you know, in, in games. And this is this was game number five, Whoa. counting a, a scrimmage a scrimmage that they had preseason. Um, and, man, he looked really good. I mean, I mean Jalen Harvey is, is going to be a big-time player wherever he ends up. So, you know, we still think it's going to be USC – he told us that he's he's actually waiting for the school principal at Quince Orchard High School to to figure out a date for him because it's going to be a big deal. They're going to do a big announcement in in the gymnasium and all that kind of stuff. So he said it's definitely going to be no more than than three or four more weeks. So so we'll see what happens with that. But uh, that's that's basically all I did as far as getting out and seeing guys. We'll, we'll really start hitting the road hard to see recruits in person, going to practices and all that kind of stuff. Uh, next week uh, prior to the to, to Utah week. So we'll, we'll be going around to all the Southern California schools and hitting those pretty hard um, for the, for the next six to eight weeks. Yeah, for sure. And adding on to that, we got a few more uh, offers for the class of 2024, starting off with uh, safety Dante Carter out of uh, uh, Cibolo, Texas, uh, number three ranked safety in the class and is currently committed to Vanderbilt. Uh, Scott, do you have any insight on him? Yeah, well, we don't have a whole lot of insight on him. You know, it's one of those guys that, uh, you know, they, they evaluated here late compared yeah. to other guys. You know, they watched some, some film from the season. This guy's uh, – I, I, I do know they like him a lot. That's a guy that probably will visit. Um, we haven't had an opportunity to speak with him yet, uh, unlike the other the safety, potentially linebacker that we'll be talking about from Minnesota here in a second. But, uh, you know, he's the guy that I think I'd like to go down and, 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 and take a look at, too. I do plan to be on in, in Texas at some point in November. So, um, yeah, you know, USD fans should be on the lookout for this guy. You know, USD is really, really trying to focus on getting more physical with their defensive backs. And the two guys that, that we're talking about in this segment right now fit that mold 100%. Yeah, for sure. And adding to that safety uh, position, uh, Coy Perich. Uh, who committed to Minnesota in April and is considering an official visit, um, also a four-star. Yeah, he, he, told, he told me that he's hoping that, that that official visit happens at some point for a game this year. So, obviously, there's not that many games left at, at the Coliseum. you got Utah, you got Washington, and you got UCLA. But those are all big ones. You know, th those will be big, big energy weekends at, at, at the Coliseum. So, um, you know, he's another guy that could potentially be a linebacker, though. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so we haven't had a chance to talk to him in person, but uh, uh, he's he's from a city, I think it's Esco, Esco, Minnesota. Anyway, it's, it's just outside Duluth, which is very, very far north. I think we're talking, you know, right now the high temperature in Duluth, Minnesota is like in the low 50s, and it's already almost down in the 30s for the low temperature. So um, I'm just trying to actually get to, to one of his games. I never thought I'd be going to Duluth, Minnesota for a football game, you know, definitely for hockey games, but uh, – um, but he was described to me as a freakish athlete. So this is a guy, another guy that the USC fans should definitely pay attention to. He's an outlier as far as rankings go. We have him ranked as, as at number 58 overall in the nation. And I think everybody else has him somewhere around 250 to 300. Oh, wow. So this is a guy that is potentially another big time player down the road. Definitely, for sure. 
moving on, uh, yesterday we had the USC Arizona game and we had quite a few recruits at the game. So I have a list right here and I'll start reading it off. We had already committed Marcells Williams, uh, commit safety commit Marquise Gallegos, and then Isaiah Rubin, who is a cornerback prospect, announcing October 20th, uh, 2025 cornerback mm-hmm. Dijon Lee, 2025 uh, modern day edge Nasir Wyatt, who's high, high on our lists, and then 2025 safety Jonte Gilbert, 2025 cornerback Chuck McDonald the third out of modern day. 2025 uh, cornerback uh, Darius Dixon, also out of modern day. 2025 O-lineman uh, Logan Powell uh, from Scottsdale, Arizona. And then 2025 cornerback Jet White uh, from Miami. And then 2025 cornerback Tristan Castro from Upland, California. And then yeah. I'll get in the 2026 class. Uh, before I go into 2026 class, do y'all want to uh, have any thoughts on them? That, uh, any yeah, you know, those, those, like, we got some feedback from those guys, you know, like John Tate Gilbert. Um, you know, one of the one of the questions on our site, and you know, understandably, is you know how is how are are the defensive performances and and this latest one with the guys in attendance? Oh yeah, at the game, and and you know what what are their thoughts on the USC defense, right? Because we you you basically listed off almost all defensive prospects. You know, yeah, obviously definitely. the Palace offensive lineman, and you stated that, but most of those guys are are defensive backs and and edge outside linebackers. Um, and, you know, John T. Gilbert, had, it was like a really, really great visit for him. You know, the bottom line is they they saw a team that got down by 17 points and, and fought hard despite a, a lot of adversity. The offense was not playing well. Yeah. Um, it looked like the defense was having their issues again. But these guys looked at it like a 6-0 and football team won a game and held on and played scrappy and played tough. They're, they're looking at, like, the culture of the USC football program USC fans can be up in arms with Alex Rinse, the defensive coordinator, the way the USC defense is performing, you know, that's fine. You know, whatever's happening on the field is up for, for criticism. Everything's fair. But these kids are looking at this from a far different perspective than, than fans are. There's the, the emotions are completely taken out of it. Right. So they're not watching, they're not watching a linebacker miss a tackle and just getting out of control, upset over it, and then thinking that you know the end is near with the football team or the or the season. So these guys are mostly looking at USC's a six and oh top ten ranked football program that just you know gave up 28 points to, to Arizona. I think most of the guys in attendance understand uh the receivers that were being thrown to at arizona let's like i mean we do need to give arizona some credit you know noah fafita uh is, is a quarterback that you know he, he proved that some of the stuff that the coaches may not the, may look at a little bit too closely maybe not too too closely is the wrong way but you know noah is on the shorter side as far as his quarterbacks go you know he's probably about five ten or or five nine but it just goes to show you that you can have a, an exceptionally talented mind who is so strong with his football thought processes, like he is so sure of himself, like Noah Pepita is. And he can go out there his second start as a, as a registered uh, freshman and go out there and toss the ball to, to T-Mac. And, and, and the receivers of Arizona are extremely talented. So, um, you know, that was, it was it, these recruits are looking at it like USC is 6-0. and and that's pretty much the bottom line on how they're looking at it now. Now, if they would have lost this game yesterday, would, would the feedback be significantly different? Probably, but it's not. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, a win's a win. They came, they came back from yeah. seventeen points and they won. And I'm glad they can they're able to see that and not get overwhelmed by the by the lackluster of a win that fans may see it as. Yeah, and they love the atmosphere at the Coliseum too. Oh yeah, it's a great atmosphere. I mean, yeah. it's no SEC school, but I mean, just to have all those people in there, the lights, fantastic. Yeah, perfect. Heading into the 2026 class, we got uh, Brandon Lockhart, uh, Loyola, California, uh, D- Devon Benjamin, uh, Oaks Christian, California, a cornerback, yeah. uh, Hayden Lowe, D-line out of Oaks Christian, uh, cornerback Marcellus Ryan from Orange Lutheran, mm-hmm. and that will continue the li- uh, that will finish the list. There were a few more other people like Brandon Baker was there with with, oh, nice. uh, with my my guy Chris Talamayval from Giant Skills. They also had Tom Tom from Modern Day, who's going to be probably a five star prospect for the class of 2026. And they had uh, Lex Mylongi, um, who was also there. He's a class of 2026. It's crazy to talk about class of 2027 prospects, yeah. but I mean, these, but we have to talk about these guys because they're already, you know, standing out among, 
you know, whether we're talking about seniors, juniors, or sophomores, you know, these these true there's no true freshmen and in, in obviously in high school, but these freshmen are coming in and and just like blowing me away on how yeah. impactful they are at such a young age. So um Brandon Lockhart, I wanted to say about him, but he, you know, he's I think our number one ranked class of 2026 prospect on the West mm-hmm. Coast. So, you know, these are guys you want to see show up like Dijon Lee, class of 2025, cornerback five star. You know, these guys are showing up all the time. And that's that's typically a means far more than whatever words are saying about the football program. Yeah, for sure. And then transitioning that we already kind of covered the Arizona game. But uh, Scott, if you want to give your initial reactions, what you saw uh, on television. Yeah, you know, what I, what I saw was a, a, a shockingly struggling offense Yeah, uh, for, for USC. And uh, you know, I guess we shouldn't have been overly surprised considering that, you know, Arizona really did a great job stop, stopping oh, yeah. Washington a week ago, right? So, you know, we're, we're looking at maybe a team that we might give a little bit more credit than a lot of people are. You know, they're, it's Arizona. We get where Arizona has been for the last, you know, decade or so. Really, really struggling. But Jed Fish has put together you know, with some transfers and, and some high school key high, high school additions. Um, it, you know, it's a very very solid looking program going forward. So you faced an offense that has some NFL football players on it, first rounders at, at receiver. T Mac is definitely one of those from from Servite. Um, and and also saw the defense just it seemed like Arizona just like went down the field no problem receivers at the very beginning of the game wide open um big easy run plays looked like usc couldn't stop the run game for for fewer than you know four or five yards at a, at a clip so um saw a team that looked like they were going to lose is what i saw in in the first quarter the, all, all signs you know especially you know they got down 17 nothing and then caleb kind of took them down the field it looked like they were going to get to 17 7 and then they fumbles you know so you're going Okay, this is one of those Stanford USC games in 2007 or whenever the hell it was where USC was a 49 point favorite and they, yep. and they lost because they turned the ball over like seven times. So this was one, this had like that feel like, oh, here we go again. And again, we mentioned this last week, USC struggled like this last year too. So what that leads me to believe is, you know, it's not like USC can't go up to South Bend and win a football game, but back to, back to the Arizona game. Um, just in, in kind of like letting things simmer down, you know, they, they really gave up one touchdown in three quarters to finish the game. So overall, you know, people are laughing at Caleb. Now, Caleb won that football game. For yep. He was the reason they were able, the main reason they were able to come win that football game. But the defense was the reason he was able to come have those plays matter enough to win. So like, I'm, I, I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to like dismiss like the, there's not any issues with the defense, but this particular game was not the defense's problem. This was this this was a team effort, and the offense really struggled. No, I I fully agree, and it it really changed my perspective on you know how I see these Trojan football games. As of right now, I don't care who the opponent is, I don't care what the score is, as long as we have more points. That's all I care about. So like, and you know, it's <clears throat> yeah. I, let me just finish this okay, about ahead. that. These first six games were against all unranked opponents, all opponents that USC thought that that fans thought that they were going to breeze through and have no issues winning. The final six games are against five ranked opponents, right? So these are, these are going to be, it's going to be so different with the USC fans perspective is that I don't think they're going to care if they only win by one point the rest of the way. So I'm sorry. I, I, I cut you off there, but I, I, that was like an important thing for me to say. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, like you said, the defense really kind of turned the table there right after Kayla Williams fumble. Then we get that Jacoby Covington interception, and that really brought life. Like that single handedly turned the table of the game and changed the course of the game, in my opinion, for sure. A win's a win, and that's the way I'm looking at these games. We we go in there, we 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 go down early, and we come back and we win, regardless of the score. It wins a win, and you know what? I'm as happy to not have a loss. That that's all I care about. You know, it's, last year it was kind of like TCU. Every week they kept they kept coming from behind. Or they had all these close games, and and they just kept kept you know hanging on. And you know, this that's kind of like what I see with USC is that they have the ability to win every single football game they're going to play the rest of the year. They have the ability to lose every football game. 
they're they're, yeah. they're going to play the rest of the year. So, you know, you just you just kind of need to go into it thinking that every game is a season. Um, it, it, it's it's how USC is playing defensively is probably just the way they're going to play every week, right? Yeah. And they're going to have more. The reason they'll they'll play better defensively on the scoreboard in some games over the next six weeks is because they'll have more turnovers probably or make some big plays and, and all that kind of stuff in more in some games than others. But you know, USC is a team is a has a defense that's just going to give up a lot of points to every team they play. Yeah, but what makes you really angry is that uh, Washington beat Arizona by one score and they move up in the rankings. We beat Arizona by one score. We drop in the rankings. I mean, that that's yeah. clear as day, like the bias that they have against USC and Texas lost. And I mean, you can make the statement why they can still be in the top 10. Regardless, they're a one loss team. Yeah, I don't get how you can put a one loss team ahead of a, 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 a zero loss team. But yeah. A whole it's been like this for it's been like this forever with USC. Trust I feel like me. Broken record. Hey, 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 I mean, I've said this before because I know a lot of the people that vote in the A people, and that's why I don't pay any attention to it because some, yeah. some of these people are are so freaking clueless that are voting in the A yeah. people. There's just when you get when you when you finally like learn that about these polls, that's when you like start going. These things don't mean shit, really, yeah. you know, and everything's everything's poll related though there's always going to be a poll for something and, and even this one that comes out with four weeks left in the regular you know in the regular season even that poll's got some human element to it and it's, so there's always going to be that but i just think the ap poll is about as flawed as usd's defensive scheme fair point and i mean everyone's taking shots at usc right now i mean kick us while we're down that's okay i'm cool with it but i mean if we're 12 and 0 by the end of the season i don't want to hear it that's it. I don't want to hear it. I don't transition us into our next topic. And uh, next week we're at uh, Notre Dame in South Bend. We haven't beat Notre Dame at in their house in 12 years, uh, approaching uncharted territory. Scott, do you think this is the year we finally take them down? I, I you know what I do think is I, I think I think it's going to be another great great game. And you know it's 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 hard to to it's hard to predict against Notre Dame at home. It's yeah. just it's just one of those places. That is so hard to go win at. It's like Watson. It's, it's extremely difficult to walk out of there with a victory. Yeah. Um, but this year, yes, I do think USC is going to win, and and by double digits. Yeah, I agree as well. I feel like that Ohio State Notre Dame matchup was really overrated. No team, like neither of those teams, really impressed me. And Notre Dame, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it, but they haven't impressed me so far, especially yeah. after losing that game to Louisville by double digits. Um, believe it was a great football team, but come on, you're Notre Dame. You should, you're supposed to be better than that. So I get it. We're approaching, uh, you know, a hostile environment. Uh, it's going to be close, I think within 10 points, but I definitely have USC on top. Yeah. We'll see, you know, it's, I, I just think that, uh, I, I just have a feeling that <laughs> after this last game, offensively, Lincoln Riley is probably going to spend a little bit extra time trying yeah. to figure out, you know, how, how to, to give them an advantage. And of course, if they have Zachariah Branch this week, you know, that in itself is probably going to yeah. gonna be worth a touchdown or so. I would be very shocked if the offense looks similar to how they did on Saturday against Arizona. It's going to be, yeah. they're going to be coming out, shooting shooting deep, firing all cylinders, hopefully. Yeah. And for that, uh, the line is actually favoring Notre Dame by two and a half. Um, Maisler at home, that makes sense. But the first time USC's underdogs uh, for quite a while, right? The last it is, game. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And then for probably, I mean, college game day is headed there. So the biggest matchup of the week, and that's uh, Oregon at Washington. Uh, the line is um, three in Washington's favor. What do you think? I think, I think, wow. Yeah. I, feel, I thought it'd be higher than that, to be honest with you. Oh, really? I, I, yeah, I actually, I actually think that Washington's going to handle Oregon a lot easier than people think. Wow. Okay. I'm, yeah. uh, why do you think? I'm curious. I just think you're going to get, a, you're going to, look. You know where the game's being played. Yep. You know, all team, all a team like Washington is going to play far, far better. I mean, that, Washington's not quite like Austin in my mind as, as far as difficult places to play, but it's oh, yeah. right up there. So you have all those elements. You have this, this there's so much on the line. I don't think Oregon's as good as people think. I mean, that, ultimately, that, that's what it comes down to. As much as I l love you saying that, I think Oregon is going to, I feel like Oregon's going to win. And it all depends on Bonix. If the crowd gets to Bonix, 
I can see him making a lot of turnovers, a lot of costly mistakes. But I really think Bo Nix is, as much as I don't like him, I think he'll, he'll, he'll throw for 300 yards. They'll win. It'll be close. I feel like within three to five points for sure. But I have Oregon uh, taking that, which will definitely be interesting to see how it shakes out, especially since we play Washington at home uh, in a few weeks. Right. Definitely. Okay, well, that will conclude another edition of WRSC's Recruiting Roundup with Scott Schrader. I'm Dylan Brazier, and we'll see you next Monday. Bye, Don.